what's up guys and welcome back to my channel this week i have sort of been mia on my channel recently and there's a reason for that but this video is going to be a tutorial in which i show you how to make this really cool off the shoulder but wrap design i remember someone sending me this concept sometime last year and i knew i wanted to try it out so if you've been following me long enough you know i'm engaged i'm nigerian therefore i'm going to have a traditional wedding and Nigerian traditional weddings are known for having a lot of dress changes so I'm going to have around five different outfits just for the occasion so my plan is I'm going to make some of them and I'm going to give my mom the task of you know finding someone good in Nigeria to make them for me so this particular top design is going to be one of the outfits I'm going to be working on I already have my fabric decided and I wanted something feminine but not too revealing so I really like how deep the neckline goes but it doesn't show too much i like how it wraps around the front it just it's just a really cool design i hope you guys enjoy watching this video i made the pattern i went ahead to test it and then i tried it on make sure to watch until the end because the really amazing thing about pattern making is it's a work in progress every step of the way when you make mistakes you solve the problems you go back to your pattern and you just sort of figure out issues as you work so watch until the end because i go ahead to make a sort of mini sample I try it on and then you see how it fits on me how I like taking any excess bits and yeah so if you guys like to see how I make this pattern make sure to keep on watching so I hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you did and let's jump straight into the tutorial I'm going to be working with the following materials to create this wrap of the shoulder design. First of all, I'll be needing my bodice patterns, my front and my back, which I already have a tutorial for and it will be linked down below. I'll need my pattern master and my set square, my tape measures to take down measurements, my marker pens, my small scissors, paper scissors and fabric scissors. I also have a long ruler just in case and then I have two options for pattern paper. I also got myself some fabric. I decided to use calico at the end instead of using this lovely print. But the first thing we're going to be doing is we'll be planning the front pattern. So I went ahead to trace out my front up onto the waistline. I transferred my dart as well. I just traced around the front neckline, shoulder, side and transferred my bust and upper chest line. So the first thing we'll be doing here is we're going to be drawing a slanted line from this edge of the front shoulder. So you want to slant the line a little bit more than the original shoulder slant. And then I'm going ahead to mark a 6 cm or 2 inches point along that slanted line. And we're going to slant it yet again. But this second slanted line is going to be 6 cm or 2 inches long. You can make yours a bit wider but I just think this is sort of an average width for the shoulder band now i'm going to be going to the center front edge and i'm going to mark outwards seven centimeters or 2.5 inches just marking along that waistline horizontal line like so and i'm going to mark five centimeters or two inches even outwards so the aim is we're going to connect one point to the other like so and do it from the other side to the bottom like so so we have a sort of curved extension that goes from the shoulder all the way to the waistline first up i'd like to do this with pencil before going ahead to commit with my marker pen but i'm just making this bottom edge narrower to about four centimeters or 1.75 inches and i'm just making it taper down as it goes towards the waistline which is a great thing that i use pencil so i can make easy corrections so once i'm happy with the shape i'm just going ahead to define my lines with my marker pen and my pattern master so this is what the front looks like this the color piece is what goes from the shoulder all the way to the waist and it wraps across when you have the two sides of your front so next up we need to reshape our front arm curve i'm just going to mark two centimeters or one inch along this edge like so or i'm going to be join in a new front arm curve because that old one is going to be too tight and too close to your body so i just went ahead to transfer my notch and you would need to trace out 
the main front which includes the extension that we did and then you also need to trace out a separate pattern that is going to be the collar piece so you will need two pieces for your front and two pairs for your collar but first up we'll need our back plan to even create our collar pattern so like we did for the front we're going to draw a slanted line that is a little bit more slanted than our original shoulder and mark six centimeters or two inches along that edge you slant it yet again and you draw another six centimeters or two inches line along this side like so Next up, I'm going to be marking 8 centimeters or 3 inches down the center back along that or sort of vertical line. And we will need to connect that top line to this edge of the shoulder. And from that point, mark 5 centimeter or 2 inches down the center back vertical line and connect it to the bottom of that shoulder edge. So I'm just doing this using my pattern master and my marker pen until we have this sort of back of the collar pattern so the aim is you want to connect the front to the back so you have one piece that sits all the way around your body but first up we're going to be marking three centimeters inwards and we're going to be drawing in a new back arm curve so your arm has room to move even when you wear this bodice so once that is all done this is what the back is looking like you can either cut this sort of fold or you can have a seam of the center back the choice is up to you so this is our front pattern, our plan is all done, we transferred our darts as well, we've planned in our collar shape, our collar width and I'm happy with that. The back has to match to the front along that sort of shoulder edge. So whatever width you work for the shoulder edge in the front, you have to use the same for the back because they have to match along that side. So the next thing we need to do is we need to trace out the different patterns that we'll be working with. We need a color pattern, our main front and our main back to create this wrap of shoulder bodice design. The first pattern I'll be tracing out is the color pattern. So I'm going to be starting with my front. I'm just taping down some fresh pattern paper that is wide enough to take the front and the back collar and I'm transferring that bottom edge along the waistline I'm going to transfer the bottom and the top curve just trace off everything up until the edge that we created which is going to be the part that goes around your top arm so once you trace off everything remember to transfer your notches because that would help a lot when it's time to put the garment together so you need to transfer your center front along the top and along the bottom you need to transfer where this armhole is going to be and just indicate what side is the front and what side is the um, back or the side. So I've taped down my back and I'm going to be grabbing that same pattern piece that we traced off our front and I'm going to match the front shoulder edge to the back shoulder edge like this because the aim is, is that you want to have one pattern and you want to have one piece. So once you match it up along the shoulder edge like this, I'm just quickly drawing dash lines to trace off my back collar transferring my notches as well and my center back points i'm just going to go ahead and connect all of my dash lines so i have a full visible pattern piece so this is what the collar looks like that goes all the way from the front and wraps at the back and the gray line is going to be in this direction it's going to be sort of parallel to the center back Next up, I'm just adding a one centimeter seam allowance all the way around. You can decide to cut this on a fold so the center back is sort of smooth and if you don't want a seam, but I just wanted a seam there in case I wanted to adjust the tightness of the collar around my body. So I'm just going ahead to add my one centimeter seam allowance all the way around, making my notches more visible. So when it's time to cut this piece in fabric, I know where my notched points are and it's easy for me to sort of transfer these points to fabric as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and indicate how many pieces I need. You would need two pairs if you want to have a nice clean bagged out collar piece for your bodies, your dress or your jumpsuits. So this is what the pattern looks like. I just indicated what side was the front, 
where the side shoulder edge or curve is the back as well as my green line so once i'm happy with all of that i'm going to go ahead and cut out my pattern this is what it looks like i'm relatively happy with this you need to cut four like i said earlier on and if you fold it along this way this is what it should look like when it's all stitched together you will also need to trace out your main front like i said and you would sort of include the extension across the center front because it's a wrap therefore you want a little bit across the front so the actual wrapping happens go ahead to add your seam allowance all the way around as well as transfer the dart you will need to cut two for the front one for the left and one for the right hand side i went ahead to trace out my back added my darts and my seam allowance and for a better fit along the center back i went in by one centimeter inwards instead of having a straight center back seam i wanted something a bit more curved so it's a bit more flat and flattering along the back of the bodies so these are all of the patterns that we have and we're going to be working with to make our sample we have our front back and collar piece so i'm going to be working with calico because i just think it's more sustainable compared to actual print that I could use for another project i've cut out my pieces i just cut a pair for the collar instead of two pairs because we're just making a sample i cut out two pieces for the back and two pieces for the front in an ideal scenario you would need four for each sort of pattern piece if you want to have it fully lined and fully backed out so the first thing i'm going to be doing in terms of sewing is i'm going to be transferring my dots using a pin and chalk so i lay down my pattern like so pass a pin through the dart points and mark the point with a chalk so I know exactly where my dart ends and by the time I put the notched edges for the dart together, pin them together like so and fold it along the sort of the middle point and I arrive at that chalk point. I know this is sort of the direction my dart is supposed to go. So I did the same for the left and for the right hand side so I can just take everything to my domestic machine and sew it all up. I'm going to transfer my back darts as well because we want the garment to, you know, look relatively fitted on. So I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to be sewing using a normal straight stitch. Um, it doesn't have to be anything tight or special because this is just a sample to test if the pattern actually works. Just remember to do your back stitch at the beginning and at the end of your darts to secure it in place so that it doesn't unravel when you put the garment on. So once our darts are all sewn, this is what the front looks like. I stitched up and I pressed my darts in place so everything is nice and tidy. I'm going to go ahead and pin together the center back of the, the back of the garment and the back of the collar so I can close them up the center back and have one piece to work with to attach to the rest of the garment. So I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to be sewing up the center back seam of this wrap of the shoulder bodies on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch remember to do your back stitch at the beginning and at the end because if you don't that seam is literally just going to unravel the moment you put the garment on so this is what the back looks like i went ahead to press my seams open so everything just stays nice and flat for the collar we need to sew up the center back seam as well like I said, if you don't want a center back seam, you can cut the pattern on a fold so you don't. You just have one piece that wraps all the way around. So once that is all stitched up, I went ahead to press it to open up all of my seams so everything looks nice and good. And I'm going to be joining the front to the back along the side. So I'm just using a few pins here to hold my side seams in place so I can just take it to my machine and stitch it all up using a normal straight stitch on my domestic machine. The next step is to attach the collar to the rest of the bodice. As you can see, I have stitched the uh, front to the backs along the side seam and I'm going to be pinning my collar to the bodice along the top of the neckline. 
if this was all bagged out and it had like a nice finished edge along the bottom it would look really good at this point but because it's just a sample it doesn't look that great so i'm just aligning the center back of the bodice to the center back of the collar and i'm just going to take a few pins and pin them in place so i'm pinning the sides and pinning the center back and i'm going to go ahead and pin the front of the collar into the front of the bodice along the left and on the right hand side so at this point, I realized something was a bit off. I tried to make the uh, the front of the collar match the front of the bodies, but they were just pointing in opposite directions. So I took a look at my pattern again to work out what was actually wrong. So I did it in such a way that I traced out the pattern in this direction. So from back, connecting in the shoulder into the front and the pattern came out looking so this this is what i did so i folded the back is in this direction and the front is in that direction and this is how i traced out and cut the pattern but i realized when it was time for me to fix it onto the actual sample as you can see here so the front works but the back doesn't so it means i should have turned this in the other direction i think it was just so funny when i realized the mistake i made i was like okay i better share this with you guys else someone might make the same mistake and wonder what went wrong so this is how i should have done it so the back facing me and the front facing the back like i'm looking at the wrong side of the front pattern here like the plan and then you trace off the pattern in this direction as you can see the one I did works in the front it connects with the front well but it's in the opposite direction for the back so the way I'm going to fix this is I'm going to cut along that shoulder line and flip the back in the way that it should go and tape it down I'll do the same with my with my actual sort of fabric piece I've cut to correct the mistake I just wanted to show you guys so you know exactly how it works so by the time you're doing your own pattern make sure to put the front plan in this direction and the back plan in that direction so you get the right the right piece um, pattern for this wrap collar that goes across to become like the off shoulder on the bodice to correct this mistake i'm just going to cut along this shoulder line and flip the back in the direction that it should go Thankfully, this edge doesn't have a seam, so it's an easy fix. So I'm just going to turn the back in the other direction like this, and I'm going to take some tape and just sellotape the front to the back so everything still stays as one piece and we don't have any seam along the shoulder of this collar piece. So once you put on some tape along the front and on the back, this should be fixed. But just keep this in mind when you're doing your own pattern so you don't make the same mistake that I did. So now that I figured out the right direction in which this wrap collar piece should flow, which is like this, down like that, like an S shape, I had to cut a fresh sample piece. So after taping together the shoulder points there in the way it should go, I just went ahead to cut like a new piece to test a forfeit and hopefully to be correct this time around. So. I've cut this out I just cut one pair but if you are making like the real garment you need to cut two pairs so you can finish the you can like sew it together bag it out and you have a nice smooth seam across the bottom and then you fix the top part into like the neckline of the bodice itself so I'm really going to take the pins out stitch this up and try again to see if it works this time around so on the right hand side we have the new and the correct way to cut the collar and on the left hand side you have the wrong or the incorrect way to cut the collar so now that we fixed that issue and i've stitched up my new collar piece i'm going to go ahead and try again 
pinning it along the neckline edge into the bodice pinning the center back the shoulder and immediately you can see that the front of the neckline is pointing downwards not upwards like it was doing when i did the previous color sample so i'm just going to pin those points in place matching all of my notched edges because they are meant to match they are meant to sort of connect and match along the center front if they don't then something is wrong so once i've pinned everything in place this piece is good to stitch up i'm just adding a few more to hold my sample pieces together so once everything is all pinned up we're going to be sewing with one continuous stitch starting from left or right whichever edge you prefer i'm going to sew along the top connecting the collar to the bodies along the top so i'm going to start from the bottom turn my machine sew all the way around sew along the back along the sides and down to the other front to finish at the bottom so i'm just sewing on a normal straight stitch on one centimeter seam allowance turning at necessary edges and continuing to stitch joining my collar piece to my actual bodice i think this is what makes this design really cool because by the time you have the garment on it looks like you have a collar piece that wraps from left to right and the crisscrossing at the front is just very elegant so i'm just going ahead to finish the stitch on this other edge turning to the bottom to finish up this side of the garment so this is what the sample looks like on i just pinned it up so so you get an idea of what it should fit like and there are two corrections i would just like to make for a more fitted bodice in the front i would pin up that sort of extra bit to create a bust that along the front arm curve but in terms of fit along the shoulder the shoulders seem nice and comfortable i would just make it a little bit tighter along the back as you can see there's excess along the top and along the bottom and that i'm going to take in through the center back seam good thing i left that center back seam there i think i've lost a bit of weight from wedding stress and all but those are the two corrections i just wanted you guys to know about if you wanted to try this pattern for yourself so in terms of details in terms of zips you can fix the zip along the side seam the waistline of this bodice can sit into a skirt it can sit into a jumpsuit a, a trouser to make a jumpsuit sorry whatever you want to work with and you would need about one and a half meters for this sort of bodice design so in terms of lining you can cut the lining with the same main bodice so it finishes off nice and neatly over the top but i hope you guys enjoyed watching this tutorial all the same if you did please give it a thumbs up comment all of your thoughts questions and ideas down below and i will see you guys in my next one bye